time for Danish oil. So I've got my kit out, plastic bag to keep the rag damp, gloves and the Danish oil, a couple pens to keep it off the deck. So I say I've given this um, a clean with some foam clean and you can see it's quite um, quite dull at the moment. It's nice and flat, doesn't need sanding or anything. You know, it's teak, it does hold up well to a bit of wear and tear of this stuff. You're going to get the old dings in it, but um, nothing to worry about. Let's get the old gloves back on. Like this radio is going to be finished well, hopefully as long as it works it's going to be finished a bit uh, sooner than schedule I, I give it a sort of two-week deadline but uh, it's going to be done by the weekend I'd have thought okay I've given this a good shake up I'm not sure if you've watched my videos you've seen me do this dozens of times but um, you know there's lots of people subscribing new, they're catching up with some of the newer videos first. So this really is for people that, oh, a bit too much there, Graham. Oh well. So, just a little bit on one of these multi-purpose cloths, following the grain. Just rubbing it in. Make sure to get the sides plenty in the top. And so you need to make sure you do get everywhere with every coat. Otherwise you'll end up with a not very nice finish. Yeah, that's Move it in a little bit. That's that side and this one. I used to use beeswax some um, furniture polish before I uh, discovered the Danish oil. That's the guys that did our fireplace that some um, really brought this about. I'd heard before about Danish oil being good for furniture but uh, never thought of trying it on a radio. I got some in because they put a bit of uh, like a nice new wooden mantle in for us when they fit the fireplace and they treated it with Danish oil and said you need to get some more Danish oil and give it a few more coats so we got the Danish oil and I thought one day oh, I'll try that on a radio and uh, I've looked back since really. And it does go a long way, I'm still on the original, I don't know how many cases I've done with Danish oil but a fair few. There we go, that's done. The more coats you put on the glossier it gets. I do like them quite glossy so I put three on which seems to work well. So if you roll that up keeps it um, keeps it usable for all three coats. I'll throw it away afterwards but throw it away outside in the dustbin because it can spontaneously combust apparently. Okay so this has had two coats so far. You see that's pretty good. That's come up nice. But it's going to have a third coat. The third coat should just fill in the grain a little bit better. But um, I mean, it could be left with two. But nah, let's, give this, let's go with three. Get the sheen on it. <clears throat> so this is the last coat. Again, this needs a good six hours drying time. The longer, the better. Really, it will harden up over time. I'll say this set will be going off probably 
I'll leave the final clean up to probably next week. So, um, I should think it'll be going off early to mid next week. Let's put the final coat on. Again, once this is dried, you can buff it as well, like you would a normal polished surface. There we are, that's pretty much it then. So I'll let that dry up. I'll be touching the case now for a couple days. So I've got the uh, top panel to um, polish out and uh, get it back together for a test as well. That's going to be uh, a bit nerve wracking. But yeah, that's the um, case pretty much done. I've got to just have a bit more of a go at these little dents. Let's say, you've got to be careful because you make, make them look a lot worse sometimes than you can improve them. So they're very subtle. Okay, I'm nearing the final stages now of um, the Roberts R707 restoration. Just, um, I'm going to go over this faceplate again, although it's very good. Um, Some looks like they've gone and uh, done some tea cut on it by the looks of it. I think they've done it in situ, so, I mean, there is some score and some really deep scoring around the volume and the tuning, but that is actually underneath the knobs, so we won't see that when it's back together. Um, as I say, I don't need to go mad on this because it looks like it's already been done and some spent a bit of time on it as well. So all I'm going to do is go over it with a fine scratch remover. I'm just going to go in circular motions and uh, just see if I can get it that little tiny bit better. And then I'm going to give it the uh, plastic clean and shine. So I'll bore you stupid with that. Let me pause this and I'll uh, join me again in a minute when it's done. Well, that's it done. I've um, given it a couple of goes over with the fine scratch remover and um, I've just given it a polish with a plastic clean and shine so that is ready to go back on. Let's let it dry out a little bit because I've um, I've stuck it under the tap to get rid of any old stuff. This, um, this old duct tape on the sides is a bit of a pain but if I rip it off it's likely to take the paint off so I'm going to leave it be. It's not uh, doing anything, it's well out of sight. Right, that's the module all disconnected for the second time. Out he comes, the nasty thing. Well, saying that, it might be nothing to do with the module whatsoever. But we do know that this module now is sorted because it's working in Frankenstein. <laughs> so well, that is really going to help with all the other R707s I've got here. I've got a lot of R707s here to do, all in various states of repair, but every single one needing a, a module fix. So just straightening out the pins here so it slots in nice and easy. I suppose it is nice as well that it's having its original module back in. Let's say the only refurb needed really was the electrolytics and that wasn't absolutely necessary but again it will prolong the life of this. AF124s are not known to fail so should be good to go now if I can get them lined up. 
with two pins trying to get in one hole, not good. Not a good idea. There he is. Alright, let's bend him over quick before he decides to jump out again. Got him. We've got him. Module, you're in. You're going nowhere. It's going to be interesting to get the uh, other module in Frankenstein and have a look. I'm really not sure why that one's not working because I refurbed that one. Unless I've got a wire in the wrong place, which is very possible with the AF12 series. Or I've got a capacitor backwards, could be that. Or it could be. It's absolutely nothing to do with it. Whatsoever, which would be worrying because then I'm all out of ideas. Right, really motoring now. I've never done a module in and out this quick before, so practice makes perfect, as they say. So I'll stop the video there. I'm going to solder this back in. Okay, here we are. Module is in. The original. Just new caps. Everything, as far as I can see, is soldered back in. Got to put a little bridge in there because it's a track just starting to lift just there. It's not broken, but it is. Um, it's going to need a bridge. But we got here. Got a bridge there as well. So bear with me, I'm going to get those done in a minute. Okay, the moment of truth. Will it work? I hope so. Ah, oh, we have sound. Door, the door, the door. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, yeah, so we have distorted the sound because the speaker wires are joined together. Let's try that again. fast but it simply isn't available where they are tell us a bit about counseling talking therapies a travel line which is oh three four five most of it there's something with the internal procedures about mm. for the exit mm. Let's uh, hang a short wave wire on it. Because the roads are in a poor shape, particularly the local roads, then... Medium uh, wave? Working fine. 
were normally in quarter four of each year. Long way, so it's only really one station, that's... Quite a lot of effort in getting onto this trial. I mean, it's a really, it's a really interesting trial. Which A.A. Gill, you know, wanted. This calls to Simon Rattle just as he lays out his carpet, as it were, for his plan. Oh, brilliant. Done. I'm just going to check to make sure I've got my nine volts now. was bizarre before. Um, so let me think, nine volts is between that one and that one. Yeah, 9.3 volts. Stranger, that other module uh, wasn't working, but there we go. Sorted. At last I can uh, get this and put back together. So I'm going to clean all this up, get all the flux off of it, get my dirty finger marks off of the freight front plate, then uh, it's back together and off to France. Brilliant stuff. With its original module, <laughs> with AF124s, who would have thought?